Okay, guys, right, question six. Um, some coordinate geometry with some straight lines and some circles, and we've got to work out some bits and pieces. Um, the circle C has a center A with coordinate seven five. So labeling the diagram at this point might give us a bit of an understanding of what's going on. If I can just uh, get this labeled here. So seven five is A, that's the center of the circle. The line L has the equation Y equals two X plus Y equals two X plus one is our line L um, and it's a tangent to the circle so we know that the radius meets a tangent at 90 degrees okay so I can put that in a bit of knowledge there that might help with some stuff further down the road part A show that the equation of the line PA is 2y plus x equals 17 PA is effectively um, the radius that I've just drawn in that straight line there. If it carried on all the way, you know, part through P, carry it on all the way. I can't really draw straight lines with this um, system that I'm using here, so I'll just put it on like this. All right. So the red line. Let's work out the equation of that. Now we know a couple of things about the red line. We have a point on the red line. 7, 5, because it goes through the centre of the circle. We know the relationship between its gradient and the gradient of this line here. This gradient is 2 for L, and the gradient of our line is going to be the negative reciprocal of that. So we'll call it M1 for our red line gradient, is the negative reciprocal, so minus a half. So, that, I mean, that's everything we need, really. A point on the line and the gradient is enough to do part A. So, let's start part A over here. I'm going to use this formula here. Y equal, sorry, Y minus Y1 equals M, um, X minus X1. And pop in your coordinates. So, Y minus 5. That's our centre um, coordinate here, 5. The gradient we said for our red line is minus a half times x minus our x coordinate, which is 7. And then we rearrange it to get y equals, okay? And if we do that, we should get the result of, of something, you know, we should get this result, really. Um, so let's, let's do that, see if we can work this through. So I'm just going to leave this as it is for the moment y minus 5 equals, now we should have got minus a half times x, so minus a half x. Minus a half times minus 7 is plus 7 over 2, 3.5. I'm going to times everything by 2 to get rid of the fractions. 2y minus 10 equals minus x plus 7. I did this because I could see a 2y there, so I thought, well, if they want it in that form, then let's multiply it by 2 and get rid of those fractions. Now, just rearrange this now to, I'm going to move the minus 10 over this way, combine it with plus 7, and move the minus x this way to get the result that I want, which is um, 2y plus x, so I move it across, and minus 10 becomes a plus 10, so that's going to give you the 17 that you're after, okay? So... That's part A. Part B, let me just cordon this off here. Part B is a bit more work to do. Find an equation for C. C is the circle. So we need um, the circle formula, which is going to be um, x minus a, all squared, plus y minus b, all squared, equals the radius squared. A and B are the centre. We have those that, that point centre, 7, 5. So I have the values for A and B. I just need to work out the radius. And the radius is going to be the distance between this point here and A. I know what A is. I don't know what this intersection between L and C is. So I'm going to work that out first. Um... By using, well actually, instead of using, I don't know what C is, do I? So I better do the, the red line, which I'll call L2. 
we have an equation for that and we have an equation for L. Let's find the intersection of the two straight lines. That'll be a lot quicker. So to do that, I'm going to have to set them equal to each other. So I've got the first, um, L1 is 2x plus 1. And um, the red line, L2, we said has the equation. Um, it's not in the format y equals, is it? So I'm going to have to figure out what that's going to be. So what is this going to be if I have it as y equals? It'll be y equals, I'm going to have minus x over this side, plus 17, and everything divided by 2. It's 2y, so I'd have to halve everything. All right, so this is the red line equation, so I'll put that in. Minus x over 2, plus 17 over 2, times everything by 2. It's got to be quicker, isn't it, than dealing with the fractions. So just minus x plus 17 again, once I've times everything by 2. Rearrange to work out what x is. If I put the x's on this side, I'm going to go 5x equals, move the minus 2 over. The plus 2, sorry, becomes a minus 2, you get 15. And then x is going to equal 3, 5 3's are 15. So x is 3. And then I need a y value. So put it back into one of our results here. So if x is 3, what's 2 times 3 plus 1? That's going to be, I'm, I'm substituting x back into this straight line here. So put your 3 in, your x value of 3 in there. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. y must be 7. Okay, so that is the intersection. 3, 7. So that's point P. Is uh, 3, 7. Now I've got to find the distance between the two points that we know. So I've got point P, which is 3, 7. And let me block that off here. And then I've got the point A, which is the centre of the circle, which is 7, 5. And I've got to work out the distance between them. So if I turn this into a little right angle triangle, Give you an idea of what I'm doing rather than just jump to a formula. Difference between the x values, so the, the x line here, this is the x part, 3 to 7, that's the difference of 4. The y value, 5 up to 7, is 2. And I can use Pythagoras to get the length here, can't I? So let's just do Pythagoras all in one go. So a squared is 2 squared, plus b squared is 4 squared. What's that going to be? It's going to be 4 plus 16. So I'm going to get root 20. So the radius is root 20. I can even pop that on there if we want. So we can say that is going to be root 20. And that needs to go into our formula there. So we have the equation really. So the equation of the circle, the equation of C, is x minus a, which is the centre of the circle, the x value. Oh, squared. Oh, I wrote a again, haven't I? Pop that out there. Trouble with talking and trying to do something can be tricky. X minus 7, that should be, all squared, plus Y minus 5, all squared, equals the radius squared. The radius is root 20. If I square root 20, that is just going to be 20. So that is the answer to part B. And the last bit, I should, might, I should be able to squeeze this in here. The line with the equation y equals 2x plus k um, is also a tangent to c. It's got the same gradient, all right? So we're talking about a line with the same gradient as l, which is also a tangent. So it's going to be here, isn't it? This is the parallel line. Okay, this is what we're talking about here. This red line here. I mean, sorry about these straight lines. They are awful. But I just can't draw them with the tools that I've got on this laptop. So... What is the equation? What is the, basically, what is the y-intercept here? All right, I know the gradient's 2, because it's parallel, it's a tangent to this, same gradient. Um, and I need, to, if I knew a point on this, on the line, I could work this out. So I'm going to work out the point here. Now, there is a way to do this. We can just work out the same difference here, and then do the same difference again. And we just, we worked that out, wasn't we? We said it was 2 and 4. So kind of minus 2 for that part because it's going down to across 4. 
down to again would give me a y value of um, 3. So I could put in a y value here of 3. Across 4 from the x value 7. Now 7 plus 4 is going to be 11. So that's me just using the relationship between the two points that I already did and repeating the same differences on the x and y axis to get this point here. Now I've got the equation y equals 2x plus something. I know um, what y and x are now because I have a point on the line. So I'm going to use the 11 and the 3 as my x and y value. So y is 3. So y equals 2x. Now 2 up. Uh, Sorry, our x value is 11. And this must equal, not equal, sorry. This has a plus k on the end. But the two sides must be equal. So 3 must be equal to 22 plus k. And that means we're going to get 3 minus 22 equals k. So k follows on that k must be minus 90. All right, and that's the whole question done. Thanks. I hope that's been helpful.